Over the years, I've successfully opened dozens of bank accounts in countries all around the world for personal transactional business, personal wealth, and for businesses. But there are plenty of banks that don't want to take you. And I'm not talking about banks that simply don't want US citizens or don't want non-residents. There are actually specific types of banks that I found can be very difficult to open accounts with. In this video, I'm going to share two types of banks that you want to avoid. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you'd like to learn how Nomad Capitalist can help you, the seven or eight figure entrepreneur, keep more of your own money and go where you're treated best, learn more about how we can help at nomadcapitalist.com. Let me tell you a story that happened to me recently. I spent the last three months of last year in Latin America with Mrs. H doing some reconnaissance and just enjoying that part of the world. We flew back to our home in Tbilisi, Georgia, arriving on December 30th at night ready to celebrate the new year, which in, in Russian culture and in that part of the world is the big holiday. You want to celebrate it. So we get back, we go to sleep, we you know, sleep off the jet lag. The next morning, New Year's Eve, I wake up and what do I do my first day back in Georgia in many months? I go and check out some banks. And so uh, our research team here at Nomad Capitalist, we keep track of well over a thousand banks. We have relationships at most of them. But one thing that we're always tracking is where are uh, the hot new interest rates? where are the highest interest rates? Because people want to know, you know, where can I put my US dollars and make 5% or 6% a year rather than 0.6% a year? And so we're always tracking, you know, which banks have higher rates. And so we identified a few banks that were, that had higher interest rates than the big two banks in Georgia, which are TBC and Bank of Georgia. Their rates are decent, but they're so big, they decided to, to peel back their US dollar rates a little bit recently. So I go out, and the banks that I go to are basically local branches of big foreign banks. Now, in theory, I kind of like this idea. If you can go to a country and you can get like a big uh, developed country's banks, like let's say you go to Armenia, for example, um, they have a French bank there. Or you go to Panama, they have uh, some Canadian banks. And what I like about that is, you know, imagine that that bank in Panama, that Canadian bank, were to fail. Do you think anyone in Canada would still want to bank there when they heard that the, the bank in Panama failed? Probably not. And so there's a certain motivation for that bank to make sure that they're, they're managing all their, their foreign branches correctly. Um, and so that's what these banks were in Georgia. They were banks like Turkish banks, for example. And big Turkish banks. I went to the first one. What are your interest rates? It's, on the website, it was very high. Actually, it's, it's next to nothing. All right. Off I go. Now I noticed something that first bank that was very interesting. I saw a bunch of guys sitting around. I don't really speak Turkish, but I, I've been in Turkey enough. I know a few things. I saw a bunch of Turkish business guys around. I'll come back to that in a second. I go to the next bank. I go there to open an account. Um, you know, here's my uh, here's my card. Obviously, you know, I, I have a home here. Uh, I'm not just some some guy in a tourist visa. And okay, what uh, what do you want to put some, what do you want to put the money in the account for? Not just savings, just, you know, want to make 5%. Savings? Who, who has savings? What? Savings? Really? People save? Huh? We'll call you back if, if, you know, yes or no. I said, just call me if it's a yes. There's no need to call if it's a no. Then I go to another bank, Chinese bank. Fill out this seven-page form and we'll let you know. Now, if you know anything about banks, you know that um, when you fill out one of their online forms or when you fill it and you go to the branch and, like, you have to wait for them to call, they never call you back. It's a, don't even waste your time, usually. But... Here's what I noticed at the Chinese bank also. I saw a couple Chinese guys over there talking in the corner. And so here's you know, what, I, what I've put the pieces together on, and I've been seeing this for many years. You may think, oh, you know, this big Turkish bank, they're not so big in Georgia, for example. They want to build their business. Or many, many, many years ago, seven or eight years ago, I was in Singapore, and I always thought, okay, well, if the local banks are doing this, I'll go to that little Japanese bank over there. They have very small... Uh, it's a very small presence here. I'm sure they want to open accounts. No. The big foreign banks that are in um, foreign countries, this is not always true, but they often are there to serve the local market. So why would a Turkish bank be in Georgia? Okay, you could say, well, you know, they're investing in the markets nearby. It's easy enough to manage. What it's really more of a case of is, no, no, no. There are Turks who are investing in Georgia who feel more comfortable banking with their, the same bank they have at home. 
when I came to Malaysia and put money into a, a term deposit, I know the Malaysian banks. I've been here for many years. Um, but I went with uh, a Singaporean bank. Why? Because I bank with them elsewhere in Singapore. And there's just a certain comfort there of let's just build up the relationship. Um, and so I think that's what all these banks are doing. Now, you know, if you go to see uh, you know, the big multinational banks that are everywhere, um, then that's, not, that's maybe a different story. Um, but a lot of these banks, you know, the smaller ones, the ones that are like you know, 18th on the list of assets in that particular country, they're not 18th because they can't do marketing, right? I think if, if a big you know, Turkish bank wanted to, to compete with TBC, they could probably put in a pretty good effort. But really what I found over these years is, and the same thing was happening in Singapore, you go to the Japanese bank, yeah, no thanks, we just want like Japanese customers. And so when I went to the Turkish bank, there's the Turkish guys, that's the customer base. It's not people who live here. It's not people who just want to save their money. It's not really even Georgians, you know, like, I think Georgians. It's, we're here to serve, you know, Turkish businesses who are doing business in Georgia. All right, if you want to open a checking account and it sounds good to us, we'll let you do that. But these banks will offer higher interest rates, but they're not really doing it to be competitive in what I found in many different countries. Okay, so the, the tiny bank, that's a foreign bank, that's not really putting in an effort. It, this is not true 100% of the time. Sometimes maybe they are bad at marketing, but a lot of the time, you know, you want to stick with the bigger ones. Why do you want to stick with the bigger ones? Or the ones that are used to dealing with more foreigners? Because they understand your motivations better, okay? A bank that only deals with Turkish businessmen, or by and large, doesn't really understand why someone would want to come in and just put money in a term deposit, okay? Now, there's another type of bank that often does not want to open accounts for you, and that's the kind of bank where it's basically like a slush fund for a rich guy. And there, uh, there are a couple of banks like this around the world where uh, you have someone who's a really you know, wealthy person, maybe they've got a family office, and say, you know what, let's just start, it'll be easier to accomplish whatever goal, let's just start a bank, right? <laughs> you know, in, in some countries you can get a banking license, you to put five or ten million dollars in assets, here's your banking license, and it helps the person achieve their personal goals or their family achieve their family goals. And again, you can go in and you can get a checking account or you can go in and put some money in or get an ATM card or whatever, but the service will often be much worse because what do they care, right? And uh, often the terms in those banks are worse, um, like the interest rates may be really low. Uh, and so sometimes you'll see these really small banks, like again, like you know, the, the 18th largest bank in the country, you know, bottom of the list of assets, and you'll go to their website and you'll be like, they're paying one third the, the market interest rate on, on, a, on a deposit. And you'll say, well, shouldn't they be paying more? And, and again, the reason is they're not there for, really, for a consumer business. They have the website, they have the branch, okay. You know, they don't really care. So if you wanna know who's interested in business, uh, again, take George as an example. There are banks that are kind of middle tier banks that offer higher interest rates uh, than TBC or Bank of Georgia. Uh, one bank, uh, for example, that it doesn't fall into either of these categories is in Georgia would be Terra Bank. It's, uh, it's run by some guys from the UAE and they're actually trying to, to compete. I don't think they're trying to compete or they're not being successful enough to be like number one, but they're trying to be like a solid number three between the two uh, top banks and they pay a little bit higher interest rates. Uh, and they have a 24 hour bank branch at a casino, right? Like they're putting in the effort because they really want to be a successful bank. They are owned by foreigners, but it's not only designed to cater to UAE people. Anyone who goes to the casino, hey, open an account, put your winnings in our bank. They're building different branches. They're expanding. They're doing home loans, right? So that's the kind of bank you want to look for, a bank that has, you know, that's, that's doing things to incentivize business. And this is one reason why I say uh, in a lot of countries, if your banking is a non-resident, it's going to be the largest bank that's going to deal with you. You know, you go to uh, some countries in Europe, uh, you're going to see like the unit credit banks will be some of the easiest to deal with. Um, why? Because they're huge. Here's the other thing, by the way, that tiny little bank that's run by one rich guy, they're probably more under the radar, whereas like a big bank feels like, okay, we've got a bit more latitude to do things and open accounts for people who may not live here or who may do something that's not in our normal scope of business. They understand it, okay? So those are two types of banks that you will want to be careful of if you don't want to waste your time looking for banks that don't want you. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. 
You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you wanna come and learn from my team and I, you wanna come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.